Often, programming involves more than numbers and arithmetic. There may be situations where you need to work with text. To work with text in Python, you will need to use a string, which is an immutable ordered series of characters. More on the immutable ordered part later. You can create a string by using quotes. Single or double quotes work equally well, although there are some edge cases which we will work through. In each of these cases, I printed the string hello and got the output hello. We can set a variable to be a string the same way we did with numbers. Strings can include any characters, even spaces, punctuation, and numbers. However, what do we do when we want quotation marks in our string? Since we use quotation marks to define our strings, this presents a small problem. Here, the code doesn't work the way we want it to. Python offers two solutions to this problem. The first is to place the string in single quotes rather than double quotes, like this. You can use either type of quote to define strings. But sometimes you will need to define a string that includes both single and double quotes. What then? In that case, you can use a backslash to escape quotes. Here, the string is delimited by single quotes. The single quote within the string is preceded by a backslash so that Python knows that it should be interpreted as part of the string rather than the quote that ends the string. Once our strings are defined, there are a few operations that are used for integers and floats that we can also use for strings. For example, we can use the plus sign to put strings together, and we can use multiplication to repeat strings. Let's look at an example of each. Here, our variables are holding two words. We can use the plus sign to concatenate the two strings together and print the result. This is fundamentally different from numeric addition. However, notice the two names have been squished together. We're missing a space. Python is completely literal when working with strings. We need to explicitly include spaces and punctuation if we want what we write to make sense. This time, we got a string that makes sense, putting the two words together with a space in between. Note that previously, I said white space doesn't matter in between parentheses in bits of code like print statements. Here, with strings, you can see that spaces do matter in between the quotation marks. Let's try another mathematical operation. Turns out we can use the multiplication operator as well. It repeats the string as many times as you multiply it. Here, five times. Although addition and multiplication have different applications for strings, subtraction and division do not. Here, we get an error that a string is an unsupported type for the division operator. A useful function that's built into Python is len, which can tell us the length of a string. This is just the number of characters in the string. Len is like print in that it's a built-in function that takes in a value in parentheses to perform an action. len differs from print in that it returns a value that can be stored in a variable. In this example, the len function outputs the number 7, which is stored in the udacity length variable. Built in just means Python provides these functions for us. Later, we'll learn how to define our own functions.